everybody, Joy here. It is Tuesday, October 19, 2021. And I am teaching myself and reminding myself, giving myself a refresher course plus on my scan and cut. I know a lot of you have scan and cuts and you're just as confused as I usually am. <laughs> or some of you haven't even opened the box yet. <laughs> so I am working on kitty cats for a quilt for a very, very special friend of mine. And I thought, you know what? I better practice this because I haven't used a scan and cut in a long time. So the first issue I had was the pattern. To use your scan and cut, you need images that are clear and separate and don't have any writing on them. And this pattern came, let me show you one that's really bad. There's four, five different cats. I just want to show you how screwy the directions are. See here? See how the pieces you have to use are crossed over each other? His face is crossed over his body. His foot is crossed over his tail. His tail is crossed over two other feet. You, you can't scan this into your scan and cut. You have to have just a tail, just a foot, just a face, just the two ears have to be taken off and done separately. You have to have just the ears. You have to have the inside of the ear separate. You have to have the eyeballs separate and the little pupils separate and the little nose separate. You can't do anything with this. Plus, and this usually would be helpful if you were drawing these images. If you were taking Steamacine 2 or Wonder Under or Heat and Bond and you were laying it down on this picture and you were tracing all of these shapes, you would want them to be reversed upside down because you would be cutting them out with the fabric upside down. Got a piece of fabric. <laughs> so instead of laying them here on the top of the fabric, the fabric's turned upside down. And so you're cutting everything out on the back side. So you have to cut it in reverse so when you turn it right side up, then it's right. I think a lot of you realize that you've probably done applique. Well, the very nice company <laughs> drew all of the cats in reverse. All of them. I have taught myself how to cut out fabric backed with the adhesive a very, very easy way. It's not the way you're going to learn out there on internet land. I think I saw some girl talking about this one time, but I could not tell you where she was or who she was. If you're watching me, please tell me who you are and I'll give you credit. But I saw somebody do it something like this, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this. So, since I can't seem to remember anything, <laughs> five minutes after I walk away from it these days, I typed it up. And I am going to put this there underneath my scan and cut in a folder called How To's for Scan and Cut. And as I learn these things, I'm going to type up some directions so I can remember it. So I am going to put this right here so you can take a picture of it. Right here. Now notice, if you read it, you're not going to use the fabric mat. You oh, oh, I didn't put that on here, so I've already got to add something to it. I'm not going to use the fabric mat, but I am going to use the fabric blade. So the thing that you just saw will be an update, okay, and that will be on here. Use the fabric blade. Do not use the fabric mat. Do not use the fabric mat. If I say it three or four times, I will remember it. You're going to use the standard mat because you're not going to glue the fabric down. You're going to glue the heat and bond down. Yes, yes, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it works so good. I tried it the way you see most of the people teach it. On the fabric mat, with the fabric down and the paper up, it made the biggest mess. You ever saw the paper just crunched up, 
Sometimes it would cut, sometimes it wouldn't. I hated it. And then I learned to do it this way, and it's brilliant. Okay? If you don't like it, don't do it that way. Okay? This is just a joy version. Everything I do is joy opinion and joy version. You all know that, don't you? So what I've got to do today, you see I managed to get a cat. It took me about five hours yesterday to make this cat. Not anything to do with the cat, but me trying to figure out how to apply it when it was. All the lines crossed over each other, it was in reverse, and I wanted to put it on my scan and cut because I did not want to have to draw all of these shapes, okay? So it was, it was school. I was in school yesterday. So from now on, it won't take me very long because I took the time to learn it, and so the rest of them are going to be easy. So this is going to be my test to myself today. I'm going to put this picture in my computer. I'm going to scan it into my computer. Then the first thing I'm going to do is reverse it because it's a lot easier to start with shapes that are already either up or down, whichever they're supposed to be. These are upside down. I want mine right side up. So I'm going to start my next cat <laughs> right side up. Everything right side up. Okay? So that's what I'm playing with today for those of you who like me to teach you about scan and cut. So let me play with this for a while. It's quarter till noon, so I probably should go eat some lunch first. But I'll be back just like that for you. It's been a few days since clip one, but let's continue scan and cut. I wanted to show you what I'm doing because whoever made this pattern did not make it to be used with a cutting machine. They made the cats just cross over each other. See, this leg crosses over here, this leg crosses over here, his ears. All of that should be separate pieces for a scan and cut. So, the first day, I made like five or six copies of this, and then I tried to cut the pieces out, and then I used some um, correction tape to fill in the lines that weren't supposed to be there. That was a royal pain. I decided yesterday, you know my lightning fast mind, <laughs> to use a light box. Now, joy, that's not a light box. I have a light box. I have a very nice light box. It's not one of those new skinny kind, which I'd like to get someday, but those things are expensive. It's one of the old-fashioned ones, but it's big, plenty big enough to put this on. But I don't want to get it out, and I don't want to plug it in. And I have this light box right here. So this is what I want to use. So it's going to take me two pieces of paper. In fact, notice that on this piece of paper, the lady didn't even get the kitty's tail on here. So the kitty's tail is on a different piece of paper. So I'm definitely going to have to have more than one sheet. Now, I'm not taping it to the window because my hand just writes, it just writes good a certain direction, if that makes any sense. And so, if, if it gets to where I can't follow the curve, I just turn the picture, and you'll see how I do it here in a second. And um, be sure that you use something that marks good, so your scan and cut can see it. I'm using a thin Sharpie. I have lots of Sharpies. Some of them have been here since Pluto was a pup, and they don't even write anymore. So before you start, be sure your, your Sharpie actually writes, okay? Now, this pattern came with the pictures reversed because whoever made the pattern decided that we were going to be drawing on Wonder Under or Heat and Bond or Steam and Seam, and we were going to be drawing on that actual steam scene whatever paper. I am not drawing on the paper. I do not need a reversed design. So I had to reverse the reversed design <laughs> to get it not reversed. Does that make sense? Because I'm going to show you how I cut mine out here in a minute, okay? All right, so here's my light box. Here's my drawing underneath, so I'm just going to start drawing this guy. I'll just fast forward this. 
Now see, that's as far as I can go. My hand evidently likes to just draw to the left, so I'm just going to flip this thing around, and I'm just going to keep drawing on the side that I like to draw on the best. What I'm doing is drawing the parts of this cat individually, so I can scan them in my scan and cut. Now you might think, well, that's just as much trouble. You might as well cut it out. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just drawing. Uh, there's no cutting involved. I'm not using scissors and I'm not cutting this out. So this is still easier to do with a scan and cut, okay? Because I don't have to cut it myself. And of course these pins, and not having my contacts in, the more you hold them upside down, the less they're going to write for you. <laughs> okay, so now I have the kitty's back leg drawn so the scan and cut can cut it out. I'm not cutting it out. I'm just drawing the design. So I wanted to show you how I do that. Now, you know if you've done much applique that some of the pieces go in the back and some of the pieces go in the front. So if that happens, like this big piece right here, like his body, I'm going to have to bring this down in here, hard to draw in the air, and then cut it, then draw it. Does that make sense? I'm going to have to draw that like that because this little thigh leg, kitty leg, <laughs> is going to go on top of his body. So I need to make his body a little bit bigger so this can go on top of it. I hope that makes sense. That's applique. I love applique. I tell you, I have been coming up here in my pajamas to make these kitty cats. I came up here a while ago in my pajamas this morning and I thought, oh, I can't make a video looking like this. So I did take a shower for you and fix my hair. But, oh, I just couldn't wait to get up here. Okay, so I'm going to get these pieces all drawn out. I'm going to go find what, what cat his tail is on. Now, I think it's cat number one has two tails on it. So I'm going to go find his tail. I'm going to draw all of his parts. And then I'm going to show you how I go from here to getting it all cut out to put on my quilt. The next thing you have to do is figure out what you're going to make your item out of. In this case, a kitty cat. And I'm going by the pattern because they gave me a piece of this kitty cat fabric for each cat. So this one's going to be this yellowy gold color. So what you have to do is take your pieces and figure out how much fabric you're going to need to cut it out with. So I figured out I'm going to need that much fabric and however much fabric you cut. And you want it to be a rectangle, a square, you know, something you can deal with. Now this um, heat and bond is not as long as that is, so I'm going to have to unroll more of it and do it the other way. Now very, 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 very important. Why does she say that so many times, George? Because I want you to remember that it's very, 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 very important <laughs> to read the directions on the heat and bond. And when you're sewing, or you're doing some other hobby, and you're using steam seam or you're using Wonder Under, or you're using all the different kind of brands that there are, they are applied differently. I was shocked, because Heat and Bond's new to me. Becky told me about Heat and Bond for Scan and Cut. It's the best for Scan and Cut. Heat and Bond. Light. Heat and Bond. Light. <laughs> best for Scan and Cut machines. You only hold the iron down to, you, and number one, you put the iron on medium. Steam a seam, you have it on hot and you steam it. On this stuff, you put your iron on medium heat and you hold it down two seconds to cut it out. When you apply it to your quilt block and you want it to be permanent, six seconds. Shocking. There are um, interfacings that you have to hold down 15 seconds, 20 seconds. And so you need to know your product and you need to know the directions. So, so important. It's 
Slap down your ruler. This one isn't very slappable like my other ones are. <laughs> I ordered a whole bolt of this phenosine when it came yesterday. I thought, well, if I'm going to use this, I better get a bunch of it. Now, be sure that you're cutting it to fit the, the piece of fabric's back side, not the front side. Now, this is just a rectangle. It would probably fit no matter how I cut it, right side up or wrong side up. But I have gotten the adhesive over to the iron and turned my fabric upside down, and suddenly it didn't fit anymore, <laughs> or it came off the edges, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I've got my steam machine, I've got my fabric, let's go over to the iron. I have another tip for you. When you're doing applique, when you're quilting, when you're sewing, turn your iron on. <laughs> so applique requires sewing, correct? Sewing requires a sewing machine. So while my iron is heating, let me show you these because I just got them. Do y'all know who Bernina Jeff is? He's a really good teacher. He owns a Bernina store. He also sells a bunch of other machines, not just Bernina's. And he has YouTube videos where he shows you how to take care of your machines. And he's an inventor and he invents little things for it. But he shows you how to clean it really, really good and how to take things off that you don't know about. How to take this part off and this part off and get in here and do this and do this. Uh, not totally intricate so that you don't require your yearly service, but so much more than what you know to do. And he was talking about these the other day. And he said that he sells these 10 for a dollar. I bought about a thousand of them for three or four dollars. Just saying. But what they are, they are so cute. Now good luck getting the package open. It's reclosable with a sealable top, but I could not get it open, so I cut the whole thing apart. I'm going to put them in a drawer anyway. But these are itty bitty teeny weeny Q-tips. Well, they're not Q-tips. That's a brand name. But they are little baby swabs. Teeny tiny itty bitty. And so you can get into places when you're cleaning your bobbin case and when you're cleaning other areas on your machine, you can get into places that you cannot get into with a regular Q-tip. So, awesome find. I'm so excited. I got mine on Amazon. Um, I'm sure you can get yours on Amazon if you're interested. So I have to wait for it to get hot enough. It's getting there. Then it's two seconds to glue this down for cutting. For cutting. For cutting. When you apply it to the block with the paper peeled off of it, it's different. It's six seconds seconds. I told you that already. All right, let's try. 1,001, 2,001. 1,001, 2,001. 1,001, 2,001. Now the thing about it is part of it crosses over so part of it gets a little more time. So now I'm going to go put this on my scan and cut machine and I'm going to show you how I do it. I talked about it at the beginning of this video, the first clip. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to tell you something I found out that is so Cool. Stay with me. <laughs> Let's talk about mats, my friends. Mats for the scan and cut. There are so many different ones. Now, let me remind you, my scan and cut is an SDX 225F. The F means fabric. The only difference in the F from the other one, I don't know what its number is or letter is, is it comes with a mat for fabric. A fabric mat. Turns out you don't even need it. You need the fabric blade though. So this comes with the fabric blade and the fabric mat and it's got the F after it. I watched lots and lots of scan and cut videos on YouTube when I first got this. I found most of them, all of them, extremely incomplete, extremely undetailed, and extremely lacking information. So I'm going to show you what I've learned about these mats. And the only way you can really learn it is to just sit down and do it. I spent probably five hours the other day just getting set up 
and figuring out what map to use, what heat and bond to use, how to draw the shapes. At first I was trying to cut them and, and just wipe out the lines that were extra and you know I told you earlier how I did away with that. So one thing I have learned that is wonderful. There are two mats that I use. This black and white mat is a scanning mat. I bought this on Amazon. It did not come with my machine. Amazon had this 24 inch mat and it had a 12 inch mat. I thought, oh, I'll just order the 24 inch mat. But then, after I got it, and after I used it, look here what I've got on here. I have little bitty eyeballs on here. Do I need a 24 inch mat for eyeballs? I don't think so. So what I found out totally by accident is scanning, not on cutting, but scanning, you can tell it only scan this much, only scan this far down, only scan this far down. Here, scan the whole 24 inches. I was so excited when I discovered that. I wanted to be sure and tell everybody about that because I think it's just absolutely wonderful. So, you open this all the way up, you put what you're going to scan underneath here, and then you can tell the machine how much of this super long mat you want to scan because I was going to order the 12 inch mat. I thought, well, good heavens, I don't need 24 inches for eyeballs. You don't need the 12 inch mat. Order the 24 inch mat as long as your machine can scan a 24 inch because you can scan just, I think the littlest one is six inches of it. Then there's another mat. This mat has purple on it. It has purple purple stripe at the bottom and a purple arrow. This mat is called the standard mat, I believe. Let me see if there's words on here. Yes, this mat is called the standard tack adhesive mat. Standard. You're supposedly not supposed to use it for fabric. You're supposed to use a fabric mat. As you can see, this is the one I'm using. There's my what's left of my kitty cat from yesterday. You can also see I glued the heat and bond down. The heat and bond comes off so easy. If it doesn't, you just grab it by itself. I have some scotch tape on here too, holding the edges down. But look at this heat and bond come off of here. Look at that. And it is stuck directly to the standard mat. Now somebody told me, oh, you can't do that. I'm not going to do it that way. That's not going to work. Hey. You can see I did it, and you can see it works. So you want to clean off your mat before you get on to your next project. Make sure it's all cleaned off. I'm leaving, I'm leaving the black and the white. You just noticed that it has some white fabric and some black fabric. Now this is scotch tape I'm take, taking off now because I wanted to make sure that the edges of my fabric, the edges, would not roll up when this was being cut. So there I've taken off all of the old. This is the standard adhesive mat. This is not the fabric mat. You can see up here that I've written vinyl on it, that it's for vinyl, and it is for vinyl. But I'm using it for fabric. Here is my new kitty cat. Here's the heat and bond on the back. I am going to put it down. And it's going to take up the whole rest of the width of this. And you can see I am sticking it down on this standard mat. This is a roly-poly thingy that you can buy to go with your scan and cut. You sure, I'm sure you probably already know that. We are officially stuck on. Do you see there? We are stuck on. Paper side down. Now why am I telling you this? All of the videos I have seen tell you to put it fabric side down and put it on the fabric mat. The fabric mat, by the way, is gold. I'm telling you, this works better.
it works better. It works much, much better than cutting the paper. When you have the fabric side down, the paper's on top, and the paper wants to give you problems. I don't care what they say. This is the joy school of scan and cut. So, now, I will take scotch tape, and I am going to take down these long, long edges. I'm going to tape them right down. Now this is glued down and the sides are taped and nothing is falling off. And you saw how easy that tape comes off. The tape I pulled off of here, you just saw me a little bit ago, was regular tape, not removable. So we're going to scan this in a minute. But there's no sense scanning it now because it doesn't know what we want to cut out of it. So we've got to put our drawing, we have to put our drawing on the scanning mat. The scanning. You lift this up. All of the mats have plastic, but the plastic on the other mats is just to protect it. This plastic holds your drawing down, and you scan it through the machine with the plastic on it. Let me get my drawing. Let me say again, since I'm cutting with the fabric up, I want my design in its normal position, not reversed. I just want it in its normal position, okay? I hope that makes sense. Now, I'm going to put this on this mat here, and I'm gonna put the tail down here because the tail kinda of wanted to be there. So now the plastic is on. My drawings are underneath the plastic. I'm going to turn my machine on. Oh, I'll try to get this close up to the machine. I, I have really bad luck doing that. I'm really sorry if you can't see it very well. I turned the lights off up above, so hopefully you can see this. Okay, to retrieve and, re and resume previous memory. Okay. Then I'm going to go to home, and it's going to say, Do you want to delete all the patterns? Yes, I want to delete everything because I am starting on something new. So I'm going to delete everything I was doing on the last cat. Now, I can choose pattern or I can choose scan. Pattern is if you want to go in this scan and cut machine and find a triangle or a square or the Eiffel Tower or a bird or a bug, you would go there to find it. I don't want to find a pattern. I have my pattern. I want to scan this pattern. <laughs> So I'm going to hit scan. Now you have a choice. Now some of these choices I don't understand. I just know what choice works for me, okay? <laughs> it says direct cut. Now I don't even know what you would do with that. I really don't. I, you certainly don't want to cut this mat and I'm on scan. So why would I want to? Maybe it's if you're exactly sure of where your placement is here and that it's going to automatically land on the kitty cat fabric, maybe then you just scan it and then automatically cut it. I don't want to do that. I want to scan it and then I want to move the little pieces around and tell them where the color of fabric is they need to be on. I need to tell the eye, eyeballs they're on the white fabric. I need to tell the little pupils that they're on the black fabric. I need to tell the rest of this cat that he's on the orange fabric. Actually, there's a triangle that's black here for the nose. There's two triangles that are going to be another color for the inside of his ears. But you'll see how I can arrange those when I get this done. Alrighty? So, the arrow, the arrow always goes in first. So the first thing you always have to do is set the mat in here. And to set the mat in here, you use this middle button right here. The top one is a house. That takes you home. The middle button is kind of a little picture of a mat. And the bottom picture, I just figured out yesterday, is the pause button. And it pauses the cutting. And then if you push it again, it starts. Or no, then you just push start again. So you, you push this, just like a video, push this to stop it. And then it will say over here, start, so you can start it again. So I thought, yeah, I figured something out. So you put this in, and then you hit the mat button, and the mat button is going to get it ready. And it's going to know 
by the writing on this mat, it's going to know which mat is coming through here. I don't know how it knows it, but it does. So I want to scan it, and I've got to scan it down to 20 inches, so I might as well scan the whole thing, but I'll show you how you can scan less of it, okay? So let's figure that out. So I didn't want to do direct cut. I didn't want to put it on a USB. I want to scan to cut. So I'm going to hit scan to cut. Now looky here. Looky here. Here it is. Scan area 12 by 18. That's what I chose for yesterday. So I'm going to click on this wrench and I'm going to see what my other choices are. And you can see here I can scan 6 inches of it. 12 inches is this way, so it's always going to be 12 inches. I can scan 6 inches, I can scan 12 inches, I can scan 18 inches or 24 inches. Are you excited or what? I am so excited. So we are going to choose 12 by 24 and I'm going to hit OK. So now it knows I want to scan this entire map. OK. Start. Now, what I do, this is a long, long mat, and there's nothing to hold it behind the machine. They put this two-inch little tiny shelf back here. No way it's going to hold this mat. So I put my hand under it as it comes back in here, and I just hold on to it. I just lift it up and hold it so it doesn't hang down on the floor. I don't know if that's necessary, but I do it. So there it goes, back out again. Now, it has scanned kitty cat number five. It's wrecking. I'm going to show you something else you have to do. This is going to come out like a totally horrible tracing. There's going to be extra lines everywhere that you didn't even draw. It's going to put them there and it's going to look terrible. This one actually doesn't look too terrible. Now this is three buttons that I don't understand. Probably on somebody's video out there, we can figure out what they are. I think I sort of know. I think this one on the left tells it to just cut the outline. I think the one in the middle tells it to cut the outer line and the inner lines. Like if you wanted a hole in the middle of something. Like if you were doing an outside ring and you had two circles. You would want it to cut the inside circle and the outside circle, right? So I think that's what the middle one does. This one over here, I have no idea what it does. It looks the same as the middle one, except there's no spaces. So you just have to play with it and see what it comes up with. So I'm just going to do the outside. Now, there's this little graph here. And it doesn't say what the graph is, and I couldn't find anything that told me what the graph was, even in the hundred dollar book I bought to go with it, but I can see that it goes from light to dark. So I assumed that if you go over here to the darker part, you're going to get a much better, clearer line. And I can see here that I've got a line here that I didn't draw. I've got a line here that I didn't draw. I've got lines underneath the white eyeballs that I didn't draw. I've got um, the line. What it's showing is it's drawing a line around the white paper. I don't want that there. So I clicked best of all and then I'm going to choose preview. And then if it works like yesterday, all those extra lines will be gone. Yay! I was so excited I found that out. So it's recognizing the little, the little graph is filling and there it is. Now look. Look at my picture and I'm really, really sorry if you can't see it. But all the extra lines, where it drew lines around my white paper, they're gone. They're totally gone. And it's just a really nice, neat drawing. So I'm going to say, yes, I like that. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay. You do, you do okay a lot. Okay just takes you to the next, the next step. All right, I have to find my design. Where am I going to find it? I'm going to find it either in the cloud on my computer, or I'm going to find it in this machine, or I'm going to find it on a, um, one of these things. What are these things called? <laughs> uh, flash drive. Is that what they're called? I don't use them very much. A SanDisk Ultra USB 3.0. That's what it is. So a little flash drive, I think those are called. I'm not using that. 
I'm putting it in this machine, scan and cut machine. So I'm going to click on that. So it's going to save what I just scanned. It's going to save it in this computer machine, scan and cut memory. It's going to save it there. And it's going to tell you what number I assigned it. It saved it, and it saved it as number 69. So when I put my fabric in here to cut it, I'm going to go find design number 69, and I'll know it anyway because you can tell it by looking at it. Okay, so now I'm going to send this thing out. I'm going to go back home. Home. Okay, to delete all patterns. Okay, because I saved it. And then I'm just going to send my... Uh-oh. There's not a lot of room to hold all your little tools here, so... <laughs> but they do give you some room, which is nice. So, this is what I scanned. It is in there. It is saved in the scan and cut, and I'm all done with this. End of scanning part. Let's go to cutting part. So here's the fabric. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing with this mat that we did with the other. And we're going to tell the machine, hey, I'm inserting this mat. So we're going to push the little mat picture. And there it goes. He's going to spit it back out once it figures out what mat it is. So now it knows it's the standard adhesive mat. And it is set up to use. The machine knows what's going on. So I don't want to scan. And I don't want a pattern. No scanning, no pattern. What I want to do now is cut. But before I can cut it, I have to find the pattern. The pattern is here in the machine. So here's a little picture of a file folder. So I'm going to, and it says retrieve data. I'm going to click on retrieve data. I am going to go to the scan and cut picture. And I'm going to hit the all the way down button and I'm going to go to number 69. And there it is. There's 68, which was the cat I did yesterday. So we're going to choose 69. And there it is. There it is. There's everything I'm going to cut. How interesting is that? I really wish I could get you closer up to the screen. I'm going to see if I can because I really need you to see what goes on up here. Let me practice a little bit. This is the itty bitty teeny weeny computer screen they give you on the scan and cut. I hope you can see it now. So you can see my little outlines here. Here's the white eyeballs. Here's the little black pupils for the eyeballs. Here's the ears, here's the feet, here's the body, here's the head, there's the back leg. And if you hit that down button right there, it will show you the rest of the picture. There's the kitty cat's tail. Now, what you want to do is remove the parts you don't want. There is one thing on here where it says cat number five. So we're going to click OK. And when you get here, then you can edit your drawing. We're not doing anything with the material yet. We're not ready to cut. We're not showing it the material yet. We just want to work with our design here and we want to get rid of the parts that aren't going to be yellow, black, or white. So right here in the middle is some writing that I put on and I'm going to hit, let me see, edit. And I'm going to hit the trash can. And I'm going to delete that. I don't want those words. Now there's the rest of it trash can. Okay. So now, in the middle where it said cat number five, I've removed that. I don't want it to cut that. So I want it to cut all of that. I want it to cut the eyeballs. I want it to cut the pupils. And I want it to cut the tail. So I have that all set up for how I want it. Down here in the middle, you will see another picture of a mat. It doesn't look like this mat over here. I don't know why. <laughs> but it's the mat. Hitting that mat, mat button allows you to scan the material that you have glued on to this mat. It is so cool. So watch this. I'm going to push that. It's going to say, scan the mat and show as background. Put material to scan on the mat and set it to the machine. Press the start key to scan. Now, hopefully it knows that I've got 24 inches here. Um, there's a place you can put that. I'm not sure what it is. Let's hit start and see what it says. 
So it knows, this mat just went all the way in and all the way back like you saw that other one do. And it knows that this is a 24 inch mat. When it's scanning these mats that hold the vinyl or hold the fabric, you can only do 12 inches or 24 inches. It doesn't give you those other options, as far as I know. So looky here at my picture. Can you see that there's material underneath it now? Can you see that yellow fabric is there? I know it's not the greatest picture in the world, but it is there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to move my drawn items to where they're on that material. Now I moved that down to the bottom. So let's go back up. Now you can see that most of this cat, well a lot of this cat is hanging off of the yellow fabric. That will not do. My black eyeballs are just fine. You can see here that this little black piece of fabric shows up and you can see white holes in it where I've already used it to cut things out. Cool, huh? So I happen to know that this little piece right here, let's do object edit again. This little piece right here is a nose. Sometimes you have to wait a second. Click on it. You have to hit it pretty straight. I'm moving that nose up here to the black. Now I happen to know that every cat has the same nose. So I am going to make more of those noses with this little plus button. I'm going to tell it I want three more noses. So there's three more noses there, but they're kind of on top of each other. I'm going to move them. So there's my three black noses. My um, black eyeballs are a little high. I'm going to move those down. Now they are tiny and I can hardly see them. So what can you do about that? You can go to this magnifying glass up here and you can make it bigger. Now I can, I can see the scotch tape, believe it or not. And you have to hit this like directly. So I'm going to move that over there. So I don't need to slow down. The machine needs to speed up. And this little tool is so ridiculously tiny. I think they need to do invent a tool and make a better tool. There we go. Alright, so there are some pupils for the eyes. I need to make some more of those. Now one thing I cannot see is the white material. But you have a choice here where you can choose a different way to look at the material, and I'll show you what that is. Hit that little wrench. If you don't, if you can't find something, always hit that wrench, and the wrench will take you somewhere. Let me see if I can see the white. You have two choices. Choose that one. All right. So see now, I can see the white material. I can see the white material, the black material, and the orange material, and I can see all of the eyeballs that are cut out. So I'm going to move those down. What's going to cut out four white eyeballs? Now the kitty cat is up here on the white. We don't want that kitty cat on the white. So we are going to move that kitty cat all down. I wish it would let you go to the center. It only lets you go to the bottom or the top. And that's kind of irritating. But we'll just move him down from where we can. So there's his leg. There's his ear. The inside of his ear is going to be a different color. But I don't know what color that is right now. So we'll move it over there. Let's move that leg down. Now see, that's all the pieces I can see. I've got all this material down here, but I can't see the whole thing. Let me see. Maybe we can make it smaller. Can we make it smaller? All right. I just learned something else. These arrows up here evidently move one of the pieces, the leg or the tummy or whatever. These arrows down here, if you will click on it and hold it, it will move you to the middle of the fabric. See how you learn something every day? So these arrows are right here. So I'm going to click on the body. I'm going to move it down to the fabric. These pieces may cross over each other, but that's okay. So that's on the orange. That's the head. Let's put it up here. That's perfect. Let's put the foot right there. Now let's move the fabric down. Click on that. <laughs> this is so cool. I just learned this y'all. I did not learn this by watching any videos. Move this down. Okay. 
Now I can see my outlines. I don't know if you can see them, but I can. And I want to keep them away from the tape. Okay? And this leg right here, I can rotate that leg. Let me see if that moves the leg. Yes. All right, let's go back up. What do I have now? I've got the tail on there. I don't know how you can see it. I can barely see it myself. I've got the tail. I've got the back leg. I've got the ear. Let me move this leg down a little bit. Let's do the top. That's good, 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 good. There's an ear. We've got to get the ear in here. I'm going to take this tail. I haven't shown you this yet. Object edit. Now I can turn that tail. I can turn it 10 degrees to the right. I can do 90 degrees. I don't want 90 degrees, although that might fit okay in there actually. I could put that right there. See if I put that 90 degrees. Yeah, I think that's going to work great. Turn it a little bit, back 10 degrees. There, that fits good. So now I'm going to take this back leg and I'm going to move it down and I'm going to rotate it so it fits in here better. Look at that. Awesome! Awesome! And I'm going to take this leg and move it back up here and I'm going to rotate it. Because I want to make sure it's off the tape line, and it is. So I've got all of the kitty pieces separated from each other. Alright, I've got it set up. I have it set up so all of the yellow pieces will cut out on the yellow, the black will cut out on the black, and the white will cut out on the white. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm all done doing what's called editing. I'm going to hit OK again. You just hit OK, OK, OK till it takes you to the next step. And you hit OK again. And you hit OK again. Now this is Add button here. You could actually hit Add and go find a bunny rabbit or something else that you could stick in here as well. But we're not going to add anything. We don't have any room. So just keep hitting OK, OK, OK until you come to Please Select. Please Select is where you choose how you're going to cut it. Now I have found out by trial and error that you don't cut fabric with half cut. You cut vinyl with half cut because on vinyl you don't want to cut through the backing. You only want to cut through the vinyl. On this fabric, it cuts through the fabric. Sometimes it cuts the back of the heat and bond. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter whether it does or doesn't. You just want to make sure it's going to cut through the fabric. So I found out the best way to do that is to put it on cut. Put it on pressure 2, speed 3, and half cut off. It says it's going to cut this out and it's going to take 3 minutes. And if you need to change it, other than that, you always hit on the wrench. This is the cut speed, the cut pressure. Cut pressure 0 there because that's a different blade. I don't know what some of this stuff is because I haven't used it yet. Blade adjustment area, weeding box. I'm not going to use a weeding box. What a weeding box is, is it draws a box around like the leg. And so then it will cut a box around the leg so you don't have to take up your whole piece of fabric. I don't understand 100% of this machine. I am showing you what I know about it. So hit OK. And then we're going to hit cut. And we already have cut on there. We've already chosen it. So now it wants to know if we want to do a test. Now I've already done tests because I've already cut out two other kitties. So I don't need another test. Alright, I'm going to hit cut. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, sometimes, and I can see right here that this white is kind of sticking up a little bit. And that black is kind of sticking up a little bit. And so before I start, I'm going to add some more tape up there. I should have already done it, but I didn't notice it before. And I'm going to put a little more tape on the black. Because those are pinked edges. And anything that this thing picks up, it's going to pick it up. <laughs> so I'm just going to tape all that off. Yes. And so now it will stay down. And the tape isn't going to hurt anything. The tape comes off real easy. Ready. <laughs> Set.
So now you have this instrument, which is a hook. It is a hooky thing. And let me see if this one that looks real crimped can come out here. Oh, it didn't cut very good right there. But I can cut that with scissors right there. And it's because it's loose. That is the problem. So let's see what we can do, Sue. So I am going to take this and I'm just going to cut it myself. The cut is there, but the fabric was loose from the back, from the paper of the heat and bond. So I fixed this little hind end. I have to sew around that anyway. And if I had to, I could cut this one leg out again. If I had to. Now the steam -a seam is on the back. It's ready to be an iron on. It's not totally messed up. It just crunched in that one place. Now let's see what else we've got. Let's check the tail and see if it cut good. Tail! Ta-da! See the tail? <laughs> Don't you love it? Oh, see there? That's that. Look at the head. See? See the head? It cut out absolutely perfect. You want to see the little eyeballs? Here's the noses. There they are. See the little tiny eyeballs? Oh, I'm losing my battery. Gotta go, y'all. Okay, just before my battery went dead, I was going to show you how to clean the mat. You clean it with baby wipes or grown-up wipes in this case. These are grown-up wipes. I want to show you what came off the mat. You think, oh, it looks perfectly clean. No, it's not. That is what came off the mat. So I'm using my second wipe to go over it again. It renews it, and it doesn't take the sticky away. Isn't this nice? Brand spanking new. And notice that all of the heat and bond paper is off. It came off very, very easily. Now that I have cleaned the mat, it is stickier. It is so clean. And my new little piece of fabric that I'm going to recut that hind leg with, it just stuck down so good, I don't even need tape. Use the right side of the roller. I don't need tape or anything. It is really stuck. So I am so excited. Let's see how it works. I want to show you what to do if this happens to you. You're just going to go back. It's on please select cut. We don't want to cut right now. We want to go back. We want to go to our design and we want to edit it. Now remember, this is saved in the memory of the machine. And what I'm doing, I'm not going to save this. I'm not going to undo my original in case I ever want to make this quilt again. I want the whole design there. But for this, I can remove all the pieces I don't need. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to edit. And I'm going to choose everything. Alright, everything on there has been selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to unselect the leg. Huh? Easy peasy. Okay. Trash can throw everything away yes so look all I have left to cut out is that tiny little bitty leg I'm glad this happened because you're gonna have mistakes things are gonna happen to you it's not a mistake it's just a boo-boo and you need to know how to fix the boo-boos right so I'm gonna show you how to fix it so you understand now that I have removed everything except that leg that didn't cut right and I've told the leg, here's your material right here. And it seems to be stuck down really nice and smooth and flat. Let's see what happens this time. Ta-da! Ta There's one, one itty-bitty teeny-weeny piece of glue right there. Look, look, total perfectness. <laughs> So that's what you do if you get a bad cut. I've never had a bad cut like that before. And it was because I decided what it was. Remember I told you when I started that the iron wasn't heated yet? The iron wasn't hot enough. And so it didn't really get glued down good. So it can be so many things. You have to be patient. Be patient, be willing to learn, and always have extra fabric. Oh, absolutely. Hey, I've got to go. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you disagree with or 
anything you do agree with or anything you learned or anything else you'd like me to try to teach you. <laughs> Bye for now.